hello everyone, my name's Richard, and I'm really happy to be talking to you about winning YouTube. So I think the problem that lots of us have when it comes to videos, so whether you're commissioning videos or making them yourself, is just how do you make videos that lots of people will actually see? And the majority of what I do is making videos for charities. So I've looked into this, and over the past year I've looked into this in quite a lot of detail, so I've sort of devoured every book an academic paper I've been able to find to try and answer this. So I'm just really happy to be able to share some of the more interesting uh, tidbits from the research that I've done. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, emotional responses, social motivations, and clicks per share. But I'm slightly terrified of getting honked, so I probably won't talk about clicks per share. So grab me afterwards if I don't. So believe it or not, um, there are lots of academics who are working on the question of what makes videos go viral. And my favourite academic in this area is uh, an Australian woman called Dr Karen Nelson-Field. And she's looked at how emotions drive video sharing. So she took 800 YouTube videos and a team of 28 researchers and analysed all of the videos based on the emotional responses they generated. And then correlated that to the real life share rates. And so I'll just talk about some of the more interesting parts of it. So she found that having a really strong emotional response was really important to drive sharing. So videos that had a strong as opposed to a weak emotional response were shared 100% more. And she also specifically looked at um, non-profit videos and all these findings hold for those as well. But she found that, well, a, a really good example of this is the Save the Children Syria video that came out recently, which was incredibly emotionally powerful for lots of people and had phenomenal share rates. She also looked at specific emotions. So they categorised 16 different emotions and found that actually different emotions led to very different share rates. So generally positive emotions or strong positive emotional responses led to 30% more sharing than strong negative emotional responses, with the, the most shareable emotion being exhilaration. So if you've seen some of the Red Bull or extreme sports videos that are going around a lot at the moment, that seems to bear out in what's actually going on. But she found that it pays to make people angry. So of all of the negative emotions, anger was the most likely to lead to sharing. And this is despite the fact that none of the organisational or branded videos they looked at used anger. So maybe organisations are missing a trick by not making people angry. Um, when they looked at the videos that were what they call viral superstars, videos that were shared much more than you would expect given the number of views, they found that for 90% of these, um, stories of personal triumph were responsible for the sharing. So she has said, if there's a surefire creative approach to viral video, then using personal triumph is uh, the closest you can get. And this totally makes sense looking at Upworthy at the moment and other really emotionally powerful stories of people overcoming their circumstances. So moving on to social motivations. So Unruly Media, uh, a viral video company, and they do a lot of seeding for really big corporations. And they've worked with Dr. Karen Nelson Field, but also have a data set of around 300 billion video views. And from their research, they say emotional response isn't enough. You also need uh, a strong reason to share, and ideally more than one. So they call this social motivations. And they've identified eight key social motivations that drive sharing. And I'll just talk through three of them. So firstly, self-expression. So a new New York Times study called The Psychology of Sharing asked about 2,500 people about their behaviour. And 68% of them uh, said they share to give people a better sense of who they are and what they care about. And if I look at my friends on Twitter or Facebook, this really makes sense. So people don't just post anything about themselves. They're trying to construct an identity. They're trying to tell their friends, this is what I'm interested in, and this is the kind of person I am. So when you're thinking about your videos, actually thinking, who is your target audience, and what do they want to say about themselves when they share content? Uh, secondly, social utility. So 94% of people said they consider how the information they share will be useful to the recipient. And we've seen a huge rise of educational videos on YouTube. So in the summer of 2013, 100% more videos, uh, educational videos, were watched compared to just one year before. And we've seen this in TED Talks as well. And some charities are really taking advantage of this. So some of you may have seen this uh, advert with Vinnie Jones instructing people how to do CPR. 
So this was a British Heart Foundation advert, and it was kind of funny, but by sharing it, people were actually saying to their friends, here is some useful information. Uh, so that can be a really powerful driver of sharing as well. So the third social motivation is social good. So 84% of people share because it's a way to support causes or issues they care about. And at the moment, the videos that are doing really well because of this actually make sharing the way to support the cause. So no talk about viral videos can be complete without Kony. So you'll all be very glad I've mentioned him. But there's lots of things wrong with Kony, but it was incredibly shareable. And what was the way and the narrative of the video that they said we'll tackle the problem they've created? It was by making Kony famous. So actually sharing is an action that will tackle um, the problem. And that's an incredibly powerful motivation to share. But all, all this theory is great, but is it actually possible to put it into practice? So I've just recently started to try and incorporate this into some of the videos I've made. So um, earlier in the year, I've been helping with a, a campaign on stopping water cannons entering the UK. So when I was making a video for that, I didn't have a lot of time, but I thought, will the video pack a strong emotional punch? So I got a personal story of someone who was affected and put that in the video. Thought, will the audience have good reasons to share it? So I made in the narrative of the video, sharing part of the way you tackle the problem and made it in line with the audience's target identity. Uh, there's a couple of other things. I, I found key communities to seed to, which I haven't mentioned, and I created a good name. So to help you remember some of this stuff, I've just created a quick checklist, which I'll hand out now. Cool, almost. Um, but yeah, I'll pass some of these around, and if you're interested, take it, otherwise just pass it on. Thank you very much. Cool.